Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm going to be talking about and comparing an HDR photo and an exposure blend done in Luminar. In my last Luminar video I talked about the new merge layers function and I showed a quick example of a merged uh, layered image, uh, an exposure blend if you will, and then people started saying isn't that HDR? What's the difference between that and HDR? So traditional HDR and exposure blends, that's what we're talking about in this video. Let's get into it. I've got three exposures here. I shot this as a bracket set in Madeira. So I've got the dark one, I've got the medium one, and I've got the brighter one. And what I'm gonna do is take two of these to make an exposure blend and then take all three and make an HDR. Now the difference is uh, generally when people say HDR, they mean a tone mapped image. But uh, an exposure blend is also HDR. Let me explain that. HDR means higher dynamic range which means a greater uh, distribution of light, more even distribution of light across the photo. You're trying to keep the highlights from being blown out the, and, and the shadows from being way too dark and get a better balance of light across the image. It's really, that's the goal with uh, a lot of photo editing really, but that's the goal with HDR, traditional tone mapped HDR and exposure blends. You're just trying to get a better distribution of light. You're just going about it two different ways. Tone mapped HDR is you're letting the system, the algorithm, if you want to call it that, uh, you're taking these three photos, you're dropping them into HDR Merge over here, and you're saying, hey, figure it out. Stick them together, blend them, give me a nice even distribution of light, and then I'll go edit the photo however I want. And it's going through tone mapping and it's doing that for you. Now, an exposure blend the, is, is the opposite. You're taking control. You're basically saying, hey, I like this part of that photo and that part of the other photo. I want to stick them together the way I see fit and get my balanced distribution of light by doing it myself. I'm driving and I'm figuring it all out. So that's the difference. It's just, you know, two different directions, two different ways, I should say, to get to the same place. So I'm going to explain uh, as I walk through an example of both of these. So I'm going to take this bright exposure. I'm going to go over to the edit tab and go into the layers menu and we're going to start with an exposure blend. When I do an exposure blend, I usually prefer to have my foreground as the base layer and then whatever new uh, layer I'm adding on top would come uh, above that, right? So that is the better sky from the middle image. I'm not going to use the dark one in this uh, exposure blend. Of course, I'll use all three for the HDR. Uh, and you'll see it stuck it on top. It's 50% opacity. There it is at 100. And so I've got a little bit better distribution of light uh, from the standpoint of the sky looks better. But that's because I'm only looking at the top photo. If I go like that, hey, the foreground looks great. Uh, but yeah, the, you know, the sky's blown out and that's because I'm only looking at the bottom one because this top layer is opacity zero. And that's where the blending comes in. You want to take advantage of the best of both. And so um, usually it defaults to 50. And what I recommend doing is deciding what kind of look you want because you currently have two raw files. And so what I like to do is go into each raw file and make some minor adjustments. I've uh, just make sure you click on the layer that you're adjusting. This is the base layer or the bottom, if you will, the foreground. And I'm going to move, um, I'm going to turn off this top layer actually. So let me go back up here and hide layer. And now we're only seeing the bottom layer and it's a raw file. So it says develop raw. I'm going to lift these shadows a little bit because I want that to be a little bit brighter and maybe increase the exposure a tiny bit and maybe add a little bit of contrast. So I'm making some edits to the bottom layer. Now the sky looks worse than when I started, but I don't care, right? Sky before, sky now. I don't care because I'm not going to have that sky. I only care about this foreground. And the other thing I want to do is go in here and do auto distortion correction and let the optics uh, module take care of that. So there we go. There's my new foreground. Now I'm going to go back up to this layer. I'm going to turn it back on or show layer. And what I want to do is go here and I'm going to go into layer so I can see this layer. I'm going to make it 100. That means I'm only seeing the top layer, which is the sky layer. I'm not seeing the bottom. Only while I'm editing. I'm going to go into develop raw because it's a raw file. And just remember, make sure you're on the photo that you want to edit. And I just want to pull the highlights down a little bit. It's a little bit too much. And I use the histogram as a guide here. So I'm going to pull it down like into the 80s or something. But that looks pretty nice, right? Maybe lift the shadows a tiny bit. I don't know, something like that looks pretty good. I'm not going to do any color adjustments or color grading. I'm simply playing with the sky to have a good look at it. And I think that looks good. Now I'm going to go back up to layers. And, um, you know, I was at 50. Doesn't look that great because I'm half of each photo. But this is where the masking comes in. And that's why I said earlier, you're in control because you're going to tell it how to blend it. 
I notice this is off. This is a really important point. I did distortion correction on the bottom layer. I didn't do it on this one. So go back into Develop Raw, go into Optics, click that Auto Distortion, and it'll fix that for you. So that's why that was looking off. I'm glad I forgot that because that's an important point to point out. So there we go. I'm now looking at the blended um, half of the top layer with half of the bottom, but I'm going to go ahead and mask these together. And this is the whole point of taking control of the blend. And this is why I say you're in control. So I'm making adjustments to each of the raw files. Now I'm going to mask them together so that I have a blended exposure. You can do this lots of ways, luminosity mask, etc. I'm going to do with a linear gradient just to make it kind of quick and easy. And I'm going to come down something like that. And I'm going to do a nice uh, long uh, kind of gradient zone that kind of blends them together. Maybe something like that. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to move that top layer to 100. And 100 means I'm, I'm showing 100% of that top layer. But because I applied a mask, you're only seeing the sky from the top layer. You're now seeing the foreground from the bottom layer. So this blended exposure is the best part of the sky and the best part of the foreground stuck together. And this is where the merge layers comes in because at this point, I've got a nice distribution of light. I've got an HDR photo. It's a blended exposure, not tone mapped, not a traditional HDR, but there's higher dynamic range because I've got a nice distribution of light. And I've blended it together with layers and masks. And this is where I come in and do the merge layers so that I can do some further refinements to my edits. I'm gonna go ahead and click merge layers. It's gonna stick them together. And then I'm gonna go build an HDR and we'll take a look at that and look at the two next to each other. Okay, here's my merged photo. I'm on a new layer, which is this top one. And this is the merge layer. I took the uh, bottom two layers. I make some adjustments on each of the raw files. I blended them together with a mask and then I squished them together, merged layers into a new file. Here's my file. I have a higher dynamic range image done with an exposure blend. Now, the, uh, the traditional HDR is tone mapping where you can take these three photos and what you do is you drag them over here to HDR merge and then it figures everything out. The only options you have are whatever here are in the settings, auto alignment, distortion correction, chromatic aberration, and any ghost reduction you may want to do. Now the ghost reduction can come in handy because if you look at this merge photo, if you look at this, there's people walking on the trail. Well, they're blurred because this is the brighter foreground, which is a longer exposure because it was low light, right? Which means these people walking, they moved. But um, you merge these into HDR if you pick ghost reduction, and I did. I've gone ahead and done this already. I'm going to stick that photo here, and it's going to show up right here. This is my HDR. I didn't make any edits to the photo. It's just the HDR output. If I open this and you take a look at it, it looks pretty good. It's a little bit darker. And if you compare that to the blended exposure, this is a little bit brighter. But remember, I made some adjustments to each of those layers. No adjustments here other than just saying, hey, Luminar, figure it out. This is an HDR. But you will notice I did select ghost reduction. These people are not as blurred as they are here, where they're blurred more because this was a longer single exposure. So that's one of the things to be aware of is that you have... Um, control of for the ghost reduction in the HDR merge. Now you could, if you wanted to get into it on the uh, blended exposure, you could come back and get another layer of one where they're more still and painted, but you start getting into very intricate kind of detailed work that personally I don't want to do. Maybe you do. Uh, and depending on the photo, it might be worth it. But in a situation like this, not so worth it. But now you have an HDR and you have a blended exposure. They look a little bit different, and that's because I did a little bit different adjustments to the light here. But one of the things about HDRs that made them kind of unpopular were the garish, over-the-top kind of cartoonish looks that we used to get years ago. I'm talking 10 years ago. Left everybody with a bad taste. And so now if you say HDR, a lot of people think, oh, that sounds terrible. Um, but the truth is, that's a very natural-looking HDR. And I think Luminar, but other products too, right? Lightroom, On1, the HDRs made today are much better. Uh, software is better, better, but also people just aren't going crazy with it. And the over-the-top crazy stuff was more so about people pushing the sliders too far and maybe not knowing how to use it, guilty as charged, uh, versus software. It wasn't a software problem. It was really a user problem. And again, I'm guilty. I'm not pointing fingers at anybody except myself, right? So keep that in mind. But these days, um, I mean, that's a very natural looking HDR. That looks like a nice single exposure where I happen to maybe have a you know, some kind of gradient filter in the sky, so I got a nice sky, but enough light in the foreground. 
But as you saw, this is an HDR. This is a blended exposure, slightly brighter, but that's because I made some adjustments to the RAW files. Now, the other thing about HDRs, you'll notice like here the colors are a little bit more saturated, a little bit more intense, right? But you will also notice that's a blended exposure, that's the HDR, so the colors are a little bit more intense. But I also notice if you look at these clouds, the kind of the darker ones, they tend to be a little bit more contrasty in HDRs, in my opinion. So here, in the single exposure, remember I didn't do anything to the sky, I haven't done any editing. That looks a little bit softer and a little bit less uh, contrasty than in the HDR. And the other thing was in HDRs, sometimes you get kind of muddy whites, they call them, where the whites don't really look white. They look a little bit beige. They look a little weird. Sometimes those whites can look that way. Again, I think in all products these days, you get pretty good results, very natural results. But sometimes those whites look a little bit different. And over here, you don't really have that problem because you're not doing tone mapping. You're just blending them together manually. So people call this an exposure blend, a blended exposure, a manual blend, a manual exposure blend. You get the point. You're choosing and you're in charge about what's being shown in the final result. Whereas in the HDR, you're saying stick them together, tone map it, do it for me, give me a nice output, and that's what you get. So those are the major differences. Now, the truth is, most of the time, I just do an HDR, and that's because it's pretty simple, it's straightforward, and I think the results look great. Sometimes I'll come in and I'll do a blended exposure, uh, only because maybe uh, the way I shot it, maybe one image looks great and another image looks great, but I don't need the third one, because I usually shoot three exposures in each of my bracket sets. But I shoot exposure brackets for landscapes just about 100% of the time. Um, and in cityscapes, pretty often as well, because I'd rather have the option to either merge it to HDR or do an exposure blend than just to have a bunch of single exposures. Doesn't mean you have to do that. I prefer storage is cheap, hard drives are pretty cheap. I'd rather have more files than I need than not enough files. Now, here's another thing, and this gets complicated, and we're not gonna do this in this video, but what a lot of people also do is they may take a, an HDR uh, they've merged the three exposures as an HDR and then go blend it with one of the original exposures or even with the blended uh, exposure. So you can start taking a tone mapped HDR and a manually blended exposure, stick those together in a layers uh, workflow and, uh, and come up with a, a more, again, more pleasing results. It just depends on what you're trying to do. People do different things for different reasons. I generally go about doing an HDR like that because it's pretty easy to fix anything I may not like with the photo. So as an example, I think the foreground's still a little bit too dark, so I can just lift the shadows. I can do that pretty quickly and easily. I think that looks pretty good. I think the sky could be a little bit softer. Sure, I can just take a quick mask with a linear gradient, and I can just come down here in structure, and I can just uh, take that negative, make it a little bit smoother sky. I think that looks fine. I could also come in and maybe pull down the highlights a little bit. Maybe I feel like the sky's a little bit too bright. Sure, that looks fine. I could come in and do some things like add some golden hour to kind of pump up that sunset look. Maybe I can come in here and do a little bit with toning as well. Give a little bit of that um, pink kind of look that I love in my sunsets. Maybe I'll do a little color harmony. Give it a little brilliance overall. Maybe a little bit of warmth as well. And, you know, you can start getting a little bit over the top if you use a lot of color tools. Maybe I think there's a little bit too much blue. Okay, cool. I can go into color and I can just go into HSL. I'm in saturation and I can just take the blue down and that'll reduce that a little bit. And then you can see I can take my base HDR from that to that in a couple of moves and I think it looks pretty nice. Now, I can also go and edit my um, blended exposure in a similar way if I wanted to. I've got a nice blend here. I think this looks pretty awesome overall but maybe I wanna come in and make some minor adjustments to this blended exposure. So maybe, again, pull down the highlights a little bit, maybe add a little bit of contrast, maybe come in and do some color work like I did. Maybe a little bit of that golden hour that I talked about. Start getting that a little bit warmer in the sky. Maybe a little bit in toning as well, where I bring in a little bit of those pinks into the high, uh, highlight areas. Maybe I want a little bit of brilliance and warmth. I'm doing similar moves to what I did before. Um, I can't remember exactly what I did on that last photo. But hey, it's getting pretty saturated, pretty intense. Blues are a little too much over here. Okay, cool, I can go to color. Saturation, HSL, take that blue down a little bit. And you can see you can pretty quickly get a nice result with a blended exposure as well. And it's not very dissimilar from the HDR. So here's the HDR, there's the blended exposure. HDR, blended exposure, right? 
Now, it made minor difference uh, difference in the edits between the two, but the end result, not significantly different, right? Blended exposure, HDR. I would say the intensity of these yellows and oranges a little bit uh, more, but again, easy fix with HSL or a color range mask, things like that. So the bottom line is you can get to a better result in multiple ways. These two ways are two of the more popular, right? A traditional HDR with tone mapping that gets you a nice blended exposure with a nice even distribution of light that you can then go edit. But again, you're not in control. You're letting the software decide how to blend them. Or an exposure blend, manual blend, blended exposure, whatever you want to call it, where you're taking control and you're saying, I definitely want that part and this part stuck together. And you mask them together in your own layered workflow with your own mask that you're in control of. So you have total control over that. And then you get your blended exposure. And then you can go edit to your heart's content as well. It's two sides of a coin, two different paths to really the same goal. The goal being a better exposed image, a photo that satisfies whatever your uh, interests are and something that you find pleasing to the eye. It's really what this is all about, is just taming the light in a photo, making a higher dynamic range image, either through tone mapping or exposure blends. That's the difference. I hope this has given you some ideas. And you can do either one of these really well in Luminar, and you have so much power and control. It's just fun to do. Hope it's helped, my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas about things. Feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't yet, be sure to grab my free ebook for Luminar Neo. It's at the link down below as well. I'll catch you next time, my friends. You guys take care. And until then, adios.